Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problem. Tonight in grade 5 we are working on module 1, lesson 6. And tonight we will be comparing decimal fractions to the thousandth place using like units and express comparisons with greater than, less than, or equals to. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few problems tonight. I think it's going to be about four or five problems. I think maybe four. And we'll get you going. Let's take a look at number one. Number one, directions are simple. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to compare the following. Now, I'll just tell you, in my class, you are going to need to show some reasoning here. You're not going to be able to just put in one of those three symbols and move on. So I'm going to show some reasoning with mine. Um, and you would be wise to do the same in your class, although I can't, I'm, not, I'm not your teacher, so you, who knows, maybe you can get away with it, not doing it. But I'm going to take a look at 1E. 1E, let's see, on this side we're comparing 419 and 1 tenth, and we're comparing that with 419 and 99 thousandths. Now look, at first glance, I kind of see the 99 over here, and 99 seems to be bigger than 10. But you know, I'm reminded that I really need to look place value by place place value. And I need to start here with my biggest units. I, they, both of these numbers have 400. That's clear. Both of these numbers have 110. Both of these numbers have nine ones. And then here in the next digit, tenths. This one has one tenth. This one doesn't have any whole tenths. So I think I'm done. I can tell you that this number is going to be bigger because of the tenths. I'm going to say, and I'm actually just going to write that. I'm going to say the tenths are bigger on this side. Um, that's going to be my explanation. We'll see if that uh, suffices for your class. Let's take a look at 1H. 1H. Oh, here, this, is, this time they've spelled it out. We have 104 and 12 hundredths. And we're comparing that with 104 and 2 thousandths. Okay, well, here I think it would be helpful for us to actually write down the number. Let's see. So 104, 104 and, and and is always a key word because it usually means there's a decimal there, 104 and 12 hundredths. Oh, okay, so a 12 with the, with the ones part of that 12 sitting here in the hundredths place, that's 104 and 12 hundredths. All right, now let's write there our other number, 104 and 2 thousandths. 104 and 2 thousandths. Oh, I see, so that means no tenths, no hundredths but two thousandths. Well, this is going to make the comparison a lot easier, right? Because now we have 104. That's easy. That's all the same. And again, we go to the tenths place. And in the tenths place, this number has a tenth, and this number has no tenths at all, if you can read my sloppy zero there. So I'm going to put a little next to the reason why and say that, again, the first number is greater than the second number. Let's look at another problem. Problem number two asks us the following. It asks us to arrange the numbers in increasing order. I see, increasing order, so the smallest number first. So we're kind of hunting either for small numbers or big numbers, and then we'll know kind of how to put them in, in order here. So I'm going to look at 2B, and I'm going to look just, I'm going to quickly scan these. And all of these look like they're 14 point something. In fact, actually, as I look at it, all these are 14.2 something. So 14.204, 14.200, 14.240. And 14.210. Okay, so I know that the first three place values that I'm looking at, the tens, the ones, and the tenths, those are the same on all three of these numbers. So the next thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the hundredths place. This one doesn't have any hundredths. This one doesn't have any hundredths. And these other two, they have some hundredths. And actually, so I'll leave those aside, right? Those are not my smallest numbers. And the question is, which of these two is smaller? Oh, and this is pretty easy, right? This has 204 thousandths, and this one just has 200 thousandths. Or, if you want to look at it place value by place value, this one has 2 tenths, so does this one. This one has 0 one hundredths, this one has 0 hundredths as well. But this one has 4 thousandths, and this one doesn't have any. So this one must be the smallest number, 14.200. And then 14.204 is a little larger than that. And now we're just down to these last two numbers. And again, I'm going to place value by place value. So 14.24 or 14.21. Ah, okay. This one has fewer hundredths. So that's my next one, 14.210. And then finally, 14.240. And now that we look at it, let's double check. 200 thousandths, then 204 thousandths, then 210 thousandths, and finally 240 thousandths. And that is in order from the smallest up to the largest. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more problem tonight. Problem number five. Oh, 
a word problem. So we're going to use our read, draw, write strategy. Let's go with the reading. In a paper airplane contest, Marcel's plane travels 3.345 or 3 and 345 thousandths meters. Salvador's plane travels 3.35 or 3 and 35 hundredths meters. Jennifer's plane travels 3.3 meters or 3 and 3 tenths meters. Based on the measurements, whose plane traveled the farthest distance? Whose plane traveled the shortest distance? Explain your reasoning using a place value chart. Hmm. So they've already told us they want a place value chart, so that's going to be my drawing. Let's see. Let's see how many columns I need. Let's see. The biggest, the, the, the number with the most digits seems to be this one, Marcel. It looks like I need ones, and then I need tenths, hundreds, and thousands. So that's going to be my place value chart. I'm going to do ones, and then tenths. So, you know, this isn't very good, right? I should say ones, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Okay, there's my place value chart. Let's go ahead and put each of these people in here, and I'm going to switch pen colors each time. Marcel's going to be in red, okay? So there's Marcel. Marcel's plane travels 3.345, 3.345 meters. Awesome. Let's pick a new color. I'll pick green for Salvador. Salvador's plane. Salvador's plane travels 3.35 meters. Okay, 3.35 meters. And finally, there's Jennifer. So we got to switch to another color. Jennifer. Jennifer's plane travels, let's see, Jennifer's plane travels 3.3 meters. 3.3 meters. Okay. Based on those measurements, whose plane travels the farthest distance? Okay, so which is the biggest number? That plane will have traveled the farthest distance. So let's see. When I look in the ones column, Marcel, Salvador, and Jennifer's planes all traveled 3 three ones, right? If I look at the tenths, they all traveled three tenths. When I look at the hundredths, though, let's see, Jennifer's plane didn't travel any hundredths, Marcel's plane traveled four hundredths, and Salvador's plane traveled five hundredths, so this must be the biggest number, right? Right here. This had five hundredths, Marcel's plane only had four hundredths, so we never even get to the thousands. So my last part here, I'm going to have to use my right strategy. I'm going to say that, uh, let's see, Salvador's plane traveled the farthest. I might even put in the measurement, comma, 3.35 meters. Awesome. That's our read, draw, and write strategy. And as we look back at those numbers and take a quick check, Yep, 3.35 would be slightly bigger than Marcel's and definitely bigger than Jennifer's. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.